toughest guys you could ever meet. We're inspiring his family, inspiring his friends, inspiring tens of thousands that he will never meet. If, uh, if the good Lord decides tomorrow's my day, then it's my day. But I'm telling you what, I'm going to go out with a smile on my face, but I'm going down swinging. Good evening once again. I'm Keith Ranford from 7 Eyewitness News. And thank you for joining us tonight for Kelly Tough Number 12 Never Gives Up. It is a very special night for Jim Kelly, his family, and his legions of fans all over the world. This evening at the ESPY Awards in Los Angeles, the former Buffalo Bills quarterback will be honored with the prestigious Jimmy V. Perseverance Award. That award named for former North Carolina State basketball coach Jim Valvano. While battling cancer back in 1993, Valvano gave this very familiar speech, very moving. His words coming to symbolize strength, grace, and above all, courage. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind, it cannot touch my heart, and it cannot touch my soul. And those three things are going to carry on forever. I thank you and God bless you all. Valvano died less than two months after that legendary speech, but his words live on. The Jimmy V Award is given each year to a, quote, deserving member of the sporting world who has overcome great obstacles through perseverance. And the name Jim Kelly has grown to personify that strength. The term Kelly Tough perfectly sums up the life and times of this now 58-year-old Hall of Famer and father. His love and his unwavering faith resonates with the people of Western New York and far beyond. Last year, I sat down with the legendary quarterback. It was his birthday, a day that he proudly shares with his late son, Hunter. It was a day filled with memories to celebrate the life, the career, and the man who never gives up. Proud number 12. After 11 seasons and four Super Bowls, three days after Christmas 1996, Jim Kelly played his final game as quarterback of the Buffalo Bills. Even he can't believe that was 20 years ago. <laughs> no, but uh, it's interesting you say that because I look at my daughters. My oldest daughter is 21, and my youngest is 17, and uh, they... Uh, They've never seen a game in January, <laughs> and that's bad. Kelly was 36 when he retired from football. Happy birthday. Well, thank you. It's, uh, wasn't sure if I was going to be celebrating this one, but here I am. It's all good. Sitting in the living room of his Orchard Park home, it's all good now, but it has not been all good for Jim Kelly since he hung up his helmet. My son passed. I mean, going from, you know, the ups and downs, and when people talk about a roller coaster ride, that's been my life. The Kelly's only son, Hunter, was eight years old when he died from crab -A disease in 2005. There's no doubt that the low point for me was um, when my son passed, without a doubt. To be honest with you, uh, I, I was mad. I was mad that, you know, why would God do so many negative things to somebody? And then that was just the start of it. Wow. What more? And then getting hit with cancer, not once, but twice. There's no doubt that I looked up and said, Lord, I know I've done screwed up a few times, but really? For me, the toughest part was being able to watch my wife and my two daughters. They already lost their little brother, their son. Now they're going to lose her daddy. When Kelly retired, he was building a new home in Virginia. He was going to leave Western New York, but then Hunter got sick. As Marv said, where else would you rather be than right here? I mean, that for me was probably the biggest blessing I received, knowing that the doctors here, the people, um, the Bills family, it's all here. Why leave? Why leave a place where um, th their arms are always open for that hug? He mentions former Bills coach Marv Levy a lot. Kelly became a mentor to thousands of kids over the years, but he too had a mentor. Oh, I've learned so much from Marv. Um, and here's a guy that was ready to come back and coach again at the age of, what, 91? Are you kidding me? But if there's ever anybody who could do it, he'd be the guy. And it wasn't just Coach Levy. But I also understood that I had Andre Reid. I had James Lofton, I had Don Beebe, I had Ken Hall in front of me, I had Thurman Thomas behind me. I had some pretty good guys on my side. So for me, it wasn't bad. What would your life have been like, I wonder, without a 
Tasker, a tally, uh, a reed, a baby, yeah. uh, a levy in it. I would have been the best bartender you would know. <laughs> Just kidding. Kelly became part of a team effort that led to four consecutive Super Bowls. Is there one thing that stands out from all those games? Uh, yeah, walking on the field, Super Bowl 25 with Steve Tasker and seeing everybody there and saying, I made it. I'm here. Looking back all these years later, despite the numbers on the scoreboard, maybe there was a more important life lesson here. And knowing that me and Bruce and Thurman and Tasker and Daryl and Cornelius, I can go on and on, Will Wolford, we're still close. And, uh, but I don't know if we would have been as close if we would have won a couple of Super Bowls. To be honest with you, I think by us not winning, it brought us closer together. These days, Kelly is busier than ever with various charitable foundations and business ventures. He travels the country as a motivational speaker, and he goes for cancer checkups every three months. I feel great. We're all good. Let's go. Let's have a little fun because I don't want to tell anybody, you know, we all go through things. So for me, I don't complain anymore. I just live life. And if, uh, if the good Lord decides tomorrow's my day, then it's my day. But I'm telling you what, I'm going to go out with a smile on my face, but I'm going down swinging. And there is no one who loves long shots in the underdog more than Chris Berman. The veteran ESPN sportscaster is a longtime Buffalo Bills fan and also a close friend of the Kelly family. While here in Western New York recently, Berman spoke about his friend, his tenacity, and why tonight's Jimmy V Award is a perfect symbol of Kelly's strength. He's being honored for something, for being tough, for not giving in, for inspiring his family, inspiring his friends, and inspiring tens of thousands that he will never meet. When the doctors say they've never met anybody this tough, who are we to just, we spew it, right? Like Kelly, you know, he's tough. No, when the doctors say, I can't believe I'm seeing a patient that can withstand this, well, now you're saying something. And that sentiment, that strength, is often echoed by Jim Kelly's former teammates. Long after that final touchdown, the last tackle, Thurman Thomas, Steve Tasker, Bruce Smith, and Jim have all remained close friends. And as Tasker tells our own Joe B, Kelly is the glue that helps hold all these guys together. Well, Steve Tasker here with me now, and Steve, of course, Jim Kelly, obviously being awarded a great thing at the ESPYs. Yeah. Um, I wanted to go back to the playing career and everything along those lines because, you know, Jim just seemed like a, a really strong leader. I mean, watching all this old tape of him going to every single teammate, no matter what, what happened. Right. I mean, uh, how would you describe him when you first met him as a teammate and then how it kind of evolved from there? Well, when he first got to Buffalo, he was a little bit of, well, he was really a rock star more than a football player. Uh, he really was. And, and, uh, uh, it took some time for the the community to get that out of their system and for Jim to get that out of his system as well. So we started be playing football and started becoming a teammate. And, and he started to kind of step back and, and let start to become really good buddies with his teammates and stuff. And really that's when he, the whole team turned the corner. And he became uh, one of the all-time great teammates. Even to this day, he's one of the all-time great teammates of ever. Um, he's the reason that we all get together. Uh, he's the reason we all stay in touch. Uh, he's been so generous with his time, uh, and it was much like it was when he was uh, when we were playing. Uh, he had us all over to his house. Um, he he provided the food and the drink and that and all of that, and and uh, and he was the guy that we rallied around. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. He was uh, he was a huge presence, uh, and he was also accessible. Um, you know, we could. You know, we could call him out on some things, you know, and he could call us out, certainly. And, and uh, he was, you know, was, he was humble. He respected the guys in the locker room. I mean, he really couldn't have been a better guy to have as the centerpiece of our team, certainly our offense, uh, than Jim because, um, you know, he, has a, he had a magnetic personality. And, and as somebody we wanted to rally around, he was an, an incredible competitor. Now, he's receiving this award, and all of the terms are – great because he's had to overcome so much adversity sure. throughout his, his life. I mean, what does it say about him that he just continues to fight as ferociously the way that he has? Yeah, well, there's no question Jim is a fighter, and he's a fighter, and uh, he knew he would. But even he'll tell you, one of the things that made Jim great was his family and his friends and the, and the person they molded him into. 
uh, and his willingness to be molded and to look at himself constantly and say, you know, I need to be better and, and be humble enough to do that. He did. He was always that way. Uh, and even in this, you know, being recognized like this, Jim knows it's not all about him. And I think that's a real gift to know that even in the midst of receiving an award of this magnitude, it's not about him. Coming up tonight, Jim Kelly back on the field, turning campers into football champs. Woo! This is what I do, I love it. If you don't love it, doing it for 31 years, then something's wrong. And it's a fan favorite, just a stone's throw from the stadium in Orchard Park. Straight ahead, we're going behind the bar at the Big Tree Inn as Kelly Tough, number 12, never gives up, continues. Once again, tonight you're watching Kelly Tuff, number 12, never gives up. 31 years and still going strong. The Jim Kelly football camp has been a summertime tradition for thousands of kids here in Western New York for years. Since its creation way back in 1988, the camp has welcomed more than 10,000 kids between the ages of 7 and 18. And for Jim Kelly, this is a summertime tradition he cherishes every single June. These kids may not have seen Jim Kelly play in the NFL, but they know who he is. For more than three decades, Jim has been a community guy, holding his annual youth football camp in Orchard Park, not just showing up, but playing alongside future football stars. This is what I do, I love it. It's a chance to be a kid again. After all, playing football with the younger generation is what Jim Kelly loves to do. If you don't love it, doing it for 31 years and something's wrong. The camp started back in 1988 with just more than 200 campers signing up. Fast forward to 2018 and the camp has nearly tripled in size. Some of the campers are now my coaches which is pretty cool. Campers come from all over and get a chance to meet new friends and learn the fundamentals of the game. Hearing their screams of joy after a play is heartwarming, but it's not just the kids who make Jim crack a smile. The parents would come up to you after practice, after camp, and tell me how much a real kid had fun, but they said, and we might have had more fun than they did. So that's what you want to hear. You want to hear them, you want to have them continue to come back year after year. And they do. This year's camp saw Jim throw passes and instruct kids just days after having follow up surgery. His spirits, though, high, and his faith strong as ever. George Lords is the only one that knows what the outcome's going to be for what I'm about to do, what I'm about to go through. I still have a few more surgeries left and um, take one day at a time. 31 years of this camp and still going strong. We can expect even more touchdown passes and high fives next year as the camp continues to grow and pass on Jim Kelly's love for the game. I've always wanted to have my own football camp and now I, I have it. Um, I hope I'm around for, you know, till the 50th anniversary. And to say Jim Kelly is a fan favorite here in Western New York would certainly be an understatement. These are just some of the congratulatory messages from people all over Western New York that they've been sending us ahead of tonight's ESPY Awards, where Jim, again, is going to receive the Jimmy V Perseverance Award. Tonight, 7 Eyewitness News sports reporter Matt Bove takes us to a Kelly hotspot where the fans can rub shoulders with the former QB. It's the Big Tree Inn in Orchard Park. Take it from these two guys. No one circles the wagons like, like the, the Buffalo, Buffalo Bills. Over the years, Jim Kelly has made the Big Tree Inn a home away from home. For years, I mean, I started out working here in the kitchen. For years, he would just, uh, he'd always come in and order two tuna melts on wheat with lettuce and tomato. That was, and I mean, you knew it was an automatic when he walked through the doors. Everywhere you look, inside the Big Tree, you'll find plenty of pictures of JK. But just how many are there? Oh, God, I haven't even counted. <laughs> Kelly and plenty of his teammates have shared countless meals at the Big Tree. And in the process, they've rubbed elbows with thousands of fans. He's always a nice guy. He's always buying drinks. I mean, always have a conversation with you. Never, like, brush you off or anything. He's just a nice guy. The Big Tree in. Number one in Kelly's book, and it's pretty clear he's number one in theirs. Now the stuff he went through with, you know, Hunter being sick three times. Um, 
know, it's cancer is hard to get through, and he's just this, one of the strongest players I've ever seen. I mean, I just think that he's like a real person. He's a down-to-earth guy, you know, from Pennsylvania. Now he lives in Buffalo, and uh, I just think he's a, he's a genuine person, you know what I mean? So the next time you're in Orchard Park, make a stop at the Big Tree. Maybe you'll see Jim. Flip a coin, you never know who you're going to run into in here. Courage, strength, faith, and determination. Straight ahead, Jim Kelly's journey from diagnosis to treatment, and the number one thing that keeps him going. You're watching Kelly Tough, number 12, never gives up. Welcome back to Kelly Tough tonight. It was 2013 when Jim Kelly was first diagnosed with cancer in his jaw, which then spread to his nasal cavity. He was declared cancer-free by 2016 before the disease returned for a third time earlier this year. Before Jim Kelly's very first cancer treatment back in 2014 in New York City, I went to the Big Apple and spent some time with him and his family as he prepared for what would become a bigger battle than anything he ever faced on the football field. You never know what life is going to throw at you. For Jim Kelly, the big fight, not on the football field. It's going to be here in New York City this coming week. Tomorrow morning, he heads 16 blocks north here on Park Avenue, back to the hospital to begin his radiation and chemotherapy. But on this day, a time for family and friends. Oh, my gosh. The entire city signed it. Wow. I thought it was just one cover. <laughs> Get well wishes from Western New York, 97 Rock's DJ Jixter, the delivery man. And despite the circumstances, Jim Kelly is all smiles. Even though it's apparent, he's hurting. The V2 nerve that runs through your, your face, um, and then, of course, the migraine headaches. And at times, one hurts more than the other, and there's times where they both hurt the same. But uh, you know what? I don't complain anymore because, you know, so many other people out there, they have their own problems. Oh, but they do. Thousands of people in western New York and all over the country are praying for this Hall of Fame quarterback. I know that I'm going through this, but it's just not me. It's my wife, my two daughters, and my brothers, and my dad. And of course, you know, of course, Western New York. But for me, family-wise, I need them now. And uh, they've been there every step of their way. We want to be strong for him, especially when he's so weak and so in so much pain. And, and that's really hard. Watching him struggle and him to be in so much pain is so hard for all of us. A never-ending parade of close friends and former teammates have made the trip to New York City in recent weeks. On this afternoon, another former QB. To be this guy's backup, you know, for nine years, that was special. Yeah. That and we did, we had a special bond. Kelly says it's always been about family for him, and it is clear the feeling is mutual. Why didn't he have chemo and, and radiation the first time? Right. Well, interestingly enough that you would even say that, when we came to New York, the doctor even said, if you would have had chemo and radiation after your first surgery, I would be able to tell you that I, there's nothing I can do for you. That was scary. So we were that like, would have made it worse. You yes, mean? we've been having a lot of heart to hearts in regards to a lot of things that we just tended to just not discuss in the past. So, you no, know, it's it's tough. And when you see someone you love going through something like this, it's it's not easy. It's hard being at school, not being able to be here all the time. But I am coming back and forth um, to be with him and my mom and. Um, it is tough. And just like he did for all those years on the football field, Jim Kelly is up for the fight, no matter what the outcome. Right now, I'm praying for a miracle. And um, whether that miracle comes or not, we don't know. There's only one person that knows. And as long as I keep my faith, whatever happens, happens. You know, and I've said this before that, you know, I'm not afraid to die. I know that there will come a point in everybody's life where that pops up, but I can honestly say if the good Lord decided tomorrow's my day, I would go into the grave uh, with a smile on my face because I know, number one, I've had so much fun in my life. I've enjoyed my life. I've been able to help people through our foundations, and I'm one step closer to seeing my son Hunter. And as Jim Kelly continues his recovery now, he is never too busy to help inspire the talent of tomorrow. Straight ahead on Kelly Tough tonight, looking to the future when a rookie meets a legend. 
Welcome back once again to Kelly Tough, number 12, Never Gives Up. The rookie and the legend. Despite the pain and his ongoing cancer treatment, Jim Kelly is never too busy to help inspire the talent of tomorrow. It was back in May this year when Kelly spoke one-on-one -on -one with the Bills' new quarterback, Josh Allen, and that conversation definitely leaving an impact on the 22-year-old. It's very cool just knowing what he did here, what he means to the city of Buffalo. Um, like I said, he's just he's a tough man. I mean, he's been through a lot, and um, you know, his spirit has never changed, and that's what you know everybody just can't grasp. I mean, he, he's been through some of the toughest moments, and he still comes out here and he shows his support, and he's still the man he he was. And um, for a man like that to to it, it just speaks volumes of how tough he is as a man. How tough he is as a man. Truer words were never spoken. And as we say goodnight, we want to thank everyone who helped to make this special possible, including Chris Berman, Steve Tasker, and of course, Jim Kelly and the Kelly family. And Jim, we wish you the very best. Our congratulations. Don't go away. The ESPY Awards are next, right here on 7ABC.